a U.S. Army Research Laboratory materials engineer, Dr. Mark Greep, recently returned from a one-year tour of duty working in a South Korean defense laboratory. The DOD's Engineer and Scientist Exchange Program, or ESIP, is an opportunity that promotes international cooperation. And so in that program, we have an agreement with about 16 different countries where U.S. Army scientists can go to defense labs in those countries for one year uh, and technically just work entirely for them. Greep, who specializes in nano and bio-nano materials, spent the entire year working alongside Korean scientists and engineers at the Agency for Defense Development. So you're not connected back home anymore, you are their employee uh, for one year. You know, there's a lot of just little challenges that you figure out as you go. So I'm the first person to go to Korea on an ESAP in about eight or nine years. So there wasn't a lot of people before me that I could get the small tips and advice from. I would say there's a lot of benefits both professionally and personally. I think certainly having something like this on their resume gives them a, a immense background in, first of all, networking, which I think in this day and age is extremely important and sometimes very hard to do at the same time. The agency is located in Central Korea and is known as the science and technology hub for the nation. Yeah, so at the Agency for Defense Development, it's a little bit more traditional culture, I feel, than a lot of the other businesses and research labs around Korea. In addition to many universities and industries, the region is home to the majority of the Korean government's research and development facilities. Yeah, so the project there was really interesting. So I found out when I went in there that it's very difficult for a foreigner to work on a project directly or an ongoing program at ADD. So they gave me the opportunity at the time to kind of uh, wide open prospects, develop a project that I thought was interesting, but that could tie into some of their initiatives that I was able to learn at ADD. Greep said the Koreans are working on more than 20 nanotechnology research areas, such as alternative energy, soldier protection materials, biotechnology, and stealth materials. I developed a project to develop nanomaterials towards catalytically active batteries. And so we developed lithium air batteries, which can be the next generation of energy storage. Greep said he wanted to experience Korean culture to the fullest. Uh, and one of my favorite activities there was doing some hiking with the U.S. desk uh, at ADD. And so there's several different courses all around there where you get to go for an hour long hike uh, you know, not easy hikes by any means, so I had a hard time keeping up uh, most of the time while I was there. Uh, but it made for an interesting experience. You can go up to the hike, overlook the whole city, uh, and then go back down and go back to work. Greep's wife, who was born in Korea but grew up in the States, used the time to connect with Korean culture through volunteering. And so she found some local orphanages where she could go work with the kids uh, very regularly and just volunteer there. and. Uh, kind of just get out and enjoy the city as well. Serving far from the U.S. military bases in Korea, he soon became immersed in the language, culture, and traditions of his new co-workers. The work environment there is very team-oriented. So both during work, after work, kind of your whole life, it seems, kind of revolves around your team uh, and you know, being active with your group. Uh, so a typical day at work, the normal work schedule is from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock at night. But, you know, the tradition is there. You try to beat your boss in. So you're trying to get there maybe 8, 8.30 uh, if you can beat him in. But then you have coffee, you get your day started. Uh, and then by 9 o'clock, you're starting, you're going on your project. The ESET program has many applicants each year, but only a handful from across the DOD are chosen. This is a big career decision to make, to decide I'm going to stop everything I'm doing now and move my, myself and maybe my whole family, if you have a family, overseas. For information on how to apply for an ESIP assignment, ARL researchers should contact the Technology Transfer and Outreach Office. For ARL TV, I'm Joyce Conant.